Many chess players like to practice against bots, and it can be a little bit of a different experience than playing against humans. I already made a video playing some beginner bots on chess.com, but today I'm going to start with Nelson, who's 1300, the notorious bot that brings out his queen early, and end with a 2200 master level bot. Hopefully this gives you a good example of how to navigate the intermediate and advanced bots. I expect a challenge because these bots are actually really difficult to play against. Uh, we're going to start with Nelson. Timestamps are on the video player. Here we go. Uh, I will begin with e4. And Nelson probably will play e5. Okay. Queen g4 coming soon. What? That's not even the right square. Nelson doesn't know his coordinates. Okay, well, two pawns in the center against the French defense is good. Yeah, there it is. There's queen h4. The point is, of course, that g3 is met with this. You guard your pawn. I think Nelson's going to go here. What? I thought, like, this move made sense because it fit the style, but... I'll play g3 attacking the queen, kicking it out. And then I'm just going to put my bishop on g2. Okay, e5. I mean, I might as well take it. Why not? Because this will help me develop another piece. So now I've developed three pieces and the queen is still in the middle of the board. I can already go to punish, but... Just get the king out of the middle of the board. And uh, the, the lesson here is that since we have a lot more development than Nelson, we can immediately start swarming with moves like this. Improving our position by winning time. And I want to land this move, so I'm thinking maybe even like something weird like this. Give away the bishop at knight c7. Also, shredding open the middle of the board. Instructive moment. Trading pawns to open up the e-file. Black is already completely losing. This is already... Very good, we can move the knight back and then go like this. This is very good for us because black has no development at all. And we can just keep creating threats. Uh, the knight is hanging. I'm thinking maybe queen e2 check because that also protects the knight, whereas removing the rook there didn't do that. And now I'm thinking bishop to e3. Although, I gotta tell you, so much stuff is winning here. Bishop e3 looks very good. Just attacking. Yeah, now Nelson is sacrificing the queen. Uh, I can move this bishop anywhere, and it's a discovered attack. I can also finish my development. I'm now bringing a rook. Uh, maybe queen takes with a check, then the bishop blocks. I don't see anything wrong with this move. This is not a threat because it's pinned, and I can go f4 and try to go f5, trying to utilize this pin. I can still go f5. Oh no, but then I would lose my knight. Now that the pin is gone. So I'll move my knight to the middle. And then f5 is coming. Okay, of course I will trade. I'm very happy to trade. Be a little bit careful here. Don't ever get your queen pinned. It's not a threat, but I'm just simply saying f5. And there, there we go. Nelson blunders. And now we shred it all open. Rook takes f7. Rook d7, pinning the bishop. Take the pawn. Pin is strong there. Take this pawn because he can't actually take back. We're clowning Nelson. I hope all of you just destroy Nelson after this. Check. Still can't take my queen. Um, take another pawn. I mean, we are. you know what? Just this is going to be our revenge game for all of the bullying that Nelson done of you all. I am going to take all of Nelson's pieces. You can skip ahead to the second game if you want, but I am going to get revenge for humanity in this game. I am going to bully Nelson, and I am going to take all of Nelson's pieces. First, and then I will make a bunch of queens. So, I've lost my pawn here, but I have check, and then I have check, and I'm just winning the bishop. And that's it. Now we go. Let's go. This is for humanity. Actually, wait, I haven't taken his last pawn. I said I was going to take his last piece, right? And now, you notice I'm not moving my queen, because I cut the king off on the back rank. And that's GG. Well, Nelson is a good person to start with, or a good bot to start with. Uh, because Nelson is just annoying. And once you can consistently beat Nelson, now we're going to play Isabel, who plays c4. It's the English opening. Good, good line against the English is just e5, putting a pawn in the center of the board. Uh, knight c6 is good. And now what is Isabel going to play? Okay, Isabel is playing the two knights. Now one thing I like about the English is the move f5 before you move the knight to f6. 
It's going to be a cool opening idea against uh, for some of you to put two pawns in the center. Wow. Bot is playing the best move, d4. Look at that. The point is that you go e4 now, and d5 here is the best move. That is also another way to play. Uh, black can now get very aggressive. h6, knight goes to h3, and g5. Black can also play bishop e7. I'll get aggressive. Uh, I mean, I'll try to pray, play creatively. Pray. Pray creatively. Knight e5 to get my knight out of danger. Queen d4 looks nice, but is not a threat. Uh, because I would have just played bishop g7. That is officially the bot's first very strange move. All bots do this. What is... what? I don't understand any of these moves. Okay, what if I just... put my bishop on g7 and castle my king? Oh, that's actually not a bad... wow. That was actually pretty creative. Okay, I guess I have to push my pawn out of danger. And then 96? Oh my goodness! What? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! The bot was doing some super weird stuff! Oh my god, it's hitting my queen and my bishop. Aren't you glad you stuck around? This is not just gonna be a beatdown. I have to lose material, I have to move my queen and then this. Oh my goodness. Okay, I did not expect to make- I can cut this out of the YouTube video, but I won't. I'm gonna teach you all how to... come back in a losing position. D6, okay. So what do I have after being down a rook and two pawns? I have a massive center. Massive, massive center. And all of my pieces are really well developed. This king is still stranded in the middle of the board, which makes me think I can attack it. I just have to figure out how. g4 doesn't work. Finishing my development, I can take on c4. If I take on c4, then something with e3 happens. Um, e3, knight, c4 doesn't look terrible. Finishing my development also doesn't look terrible, just to get one more piece into the party. The knight is just being rescued. Okay, e3, here we go. We're going to... Ooh! Well, now I can, like, take and then... See, I don't want to take... right away. Oh, this is, like, juicy. Okay, let me take the horse. Then let me... take this with check. And then, some sort of, I've, I've got to have something here. I'm going to sacrifice a knight. Maybe knight d3? Knight e4, the king goes back to e1. I don't really, I don't know. King e1. King g1? Really? What about like f3? Oh my goodness. We're using the fact that our opponent's king is so weak. Knight g6, knight h4 is mate. Look at that, rerouting the knight. Oh my goodness, that's a mate on h4. Check, and now the king has to come out to h3. The bishop, oh. What an epic comeback. Of course I will take the bishop because we're attacking the rook here. Oh, and that's it. The bot is basically, it's, it's giving in. g4 take and queen g5 here. I'm looking for something beautiful. Check. Let's activate the rook. The rook is the only piece that has not participated in the attack. We must have a mate. We just must have a mate. I mean... Check. Here. Check. Where is it? Where's the mate? I, I want to be careful. I don't want to just move my queen like, like a lazy person. Although maybe I can. Honestly, maybe I can just play like knight c5, guarding my pawn, and then play queen e3. Is this... This is leading to a mate. Bishop comes back to f6 check. And queen to g5. Wow. Wow. That was crazy. I mean, I, I, I got a little bit... I missed this whole idea of moving back and then... Oh my god, what a crazy... See, computers are so weird. That's the thing about playing bots, is they just play such strange moves. It would have been a lot better for me to put my bishop on c5, probably. Uh, or fight back right away with, like, c6, for example, here. You know, c6, uh, to block this pin. But bishop c5, I gotta tell you, even here there's, like, b4. Weird position. And again, you don't need to play like this. Uh, the main move in this position after knight g5 is actually to just play it a little bit more solidly. I just created this giant pawn wall, but the pawn wall ended up working! 
because later, despite us being down so much material, we have such an active set of pieces, we shred open our opponent's position, and we're able to win the game. Crazy. Okay. Now I'm going to play Miguel. I'm going to play d4, who's a positional player. I'm going to play bishop f4. e6, playing to London, e3. Miguel is 1900. I actually played Miguel already once, and uh, it was a brutal game. So the general rule of c5, c3 in London. I'm going to finish my development with knight f3. Miguel still has not played d5. Okay, now he's played d5. Now knight d2. This is a mainline London. Okay, so c4 is a bad move. Uh, c4 is almost always a bad move in the London. Primarily because you can play something with like queenside expansion. But more importantly, white will play the move e4 in the future. So the way you will set that up is you'll maybe put a knight on e5, for example, and then play e4 and you'll break in the center. In fact, I'm already wondering if I can just play queen c2 and e4. So you can't put your bishop on d3, but it's okay because a locked center benefits the player playing with white in the London. So you can play like e4 even now, breaking open the center, like take, take. And now this is just a weakness. I expect queen d5, yeah. And now if I trade, it's I'm kind of helping black. So I'm thinking I'm just going to slide back one square. Not trading. Opponent plays a little bit more aggressively. With the queen in the center, I mean, I want to finish my development in castle, but I also kind of like lining up my bishop on this diagonal. Ooh. I don't know. G3 looks really good. Is my bishop trapped with G5? No. Is my opponent beating me to the diagonal? Also doesn't look like it. Okay. Castles, castles. Oh, yeah, yeah this is fine. This is fine. Ah, see? Opponent doesn't want me to move my knight, because this is going to be mate. The only knight move I have is this. Or just the knight move that protects my bishop. And then I'm not so sure that I'm, I'm really accomplishing what I want. I still think ultimately I will have to do that. To, like, move my knight and then try to... But for now, I'm just going to put my rook into the middle behind my queen. The opponent is expanding on the queen side. Generally, a good move to meet this incoming b4 queenside attack is to play a3. And b4 is just not so good now. That's why the computer goes there. Uh, this bishop is always protected, so it's also not any sort of material being won with this. It's a very tough position, actually. Very difficult. I mean, I, I, this queen is very strong. I, I'm most likely going to have to trade something to make progress. So I'm thinking knight h4 is the only way to go here. Queen goes back. Now I will take the bishop because I just feel like it's too strong. And I have some positional deficiencies here for sure. Uh, my light squared bishop is gone and I have seven pawns on the dark squares. But can I play knight to f5? Look at this. Knight f5, take, and then I take. That looks like a serious improvement for me. Making this trade. Oh my god, the bot just has bishop f6? And now my knight is just hanging? Computers are so tricky. So sacrificing doesn't do it. Am I really going to have to go back? Man, I thought knight f5 was so clever. Don't see anything. So this capture opens my king. But in reality, this might just be open for, my, for me. Like... If I trade the queen and then lock down this knight somehow, let's take a look at queen e5. If queen takes, maybe even rook takes. Okay, I really don't like this. This allows me to win time on the queen, which doesn't look good for my opponent. Check. And now rook g Wait, what? Isn't that just a horrible mistake? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Queen takes b5. Queen takes f4. If I take, take, bishop takes. I mean, that looks good. I wish I could get better, but my opponent says, I hope you've studied your endgames as much as I have. I'm 900 points higher rated than you, Miguel. I don't know who you're trying to trash talk. Maybe we double stack? Also, h5, h6 looks really nice. I don't know. Where are we moving? King h1? Or f4, king f2? I think time is, is of the essence here. Mmm. I think king h1 and then double up. 
Right, so rook g5. Isn't what? What are you doing? It's just a check, not a sign of weakness. Miguel, you lost everything. Why are you still trash talking me? How are you? How are you ever surviving this? And now h5, h6 is the killer. H6, and the game looks over. Once you lose g7, I mean, it's all falling apart. What do I even take with? I kind of like taking with the bishop. I actually don't want to allow my opponent to cover up here. There has to be a way to win this. For example, if I move my bishop with a discovered attack on the rook, that would be nice, but I can't take my own piece. What about d5? Also like this. I don't know. Also sacking and then rook h5, king g8, bishop 2 e5. King f8. It's like a calculation exercise. Rook h8. King e7. Looks like my opponent is surviving. Let's go d5 with the threat of bishop to d4. This must be losing now. Now that the bishop is... is I mean, the rook is so far away. Some sort of check. This has to be it. Bishop f6 check lining up here. I can play rook g7. I can also play rook g8 threatening mate, no? Like this, rook g8. But bots are always a little bit tricky. So rook g8. There's a lot of ways to win this. Rook g7, take. Take, king g8, and I take, and then take, and then take. Okay, that's simple. Check. Simplify, simplify. Has to go there. I take. Bot will go here. I will take pawn. Now both of my pawns are safe, and I win. Very easily winning endgame. Opponent's only source of counterplay is three pawns. And my source of counterplay is being 2800. I don't actually know why it's 2800. Because my rating is not 2800. Now this pawn cannot push. My king is safe. And we will win this game by advancing our pawn, getting the king out, and promoting. Like this. H6. H7. He's still saying this is just the start of my attack. But it's, it's not, because you're about to lose. Oh, I blundered rook h2. The trash talk paid off. He got me scared. All right. Looks like we'll have to win an endgame instead. All right, all right, all right. It's the start of your attack. You win, Miguel. You win. Check. Just kidding, because now I have bishop f8. Opa. X-ray. Opa. Boom. Check. Here. And very easily winning. Cut the king off laterally. And then boom, 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 boom. 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 All right. No hands. Let's see if we can flex. He just says, I love game. L let's look at all the voice lines. All the voice lines coming in. <laughs> I just went to the side of the board and I did a ladder mate. I know you guys aren't always fans when I pre-move because you don't know what's going on. All I did there is I cut the king off and made sure that my rook was protected. As long as my rook is protected, it's creating an unbreakable barrier. I then made a queen, right? That's what I pre-moved. And then I brought the queen back so that my queen and my rook would alternate which file they cut off. And then I just did the zigzag, the ladder checkmate. That was a good game. That was a good game. Now we'll play Fatima. And we'll get the black pieces versus Fatima. Is this Fatima? Calm, patient, determined to queen. We'll grind you down and happily win the endgame. Why are all these bots playing endgames? What is this? Lebanon. Fantastic. All right, here we go. C4, another one? Hold on, let me, let me resign. Uh, I just want to make sure that the... Maybe the bot will play a different opening. Okay, never mind. Two Englishes, fine. We get to learn to play the English. Uh, I'll play the Dutch. I'll have to take some time to figure out how to crack that one. It's move one, Fatima. Why do they make these bots say the most, like, dramatic things? It's a jeez. Anyway, this is the Dutch defense. Uh, you try to play bishop to g7 in castles. And it's good because it's relatively non-confrontational. You just kind of do your own thing. This is a mainline Dutch defense. There's a few main moves here for black. c6. Queen e8 to try to go e5. This is actually my personal favorite. To try to go e5. Now d5 here is the main line. Uh, and here after d5, what you do is you try to put your knight on c5. And then... You try to get your, your pawn to a5 to stop your opponent from playing b4. So you like, like knight a6, knight c5, white is going for b4, 
Yeah, this also sometimes happens, and actually this is not really scary, you can just slide back to where you were. And now the knight is just on a weird square. And when they attack you, you can jump your knight into the middle of the board. Very complicated, very messy position, a lot of pieces, always kind of calculating where the pawn breaks are. Uh, can go e5, and then if on passant I just take back, that actually looks very nice. That's generally a good rule of thumb in these positions. If you can successfully get e5, you are doing well. This trade is nice. Uh, don't fall into these things like, I don't like to make trades. You have to, because my knight really has no, I mean, it has nowhere really else to go. And the question is, do I kick this knight out now? I kind of want to. I don't, I don't know. This is the first thing that I'm thinking of. The second thing in these Dutch positions, you just go for a kingside attack. White's main move is going to be c5. That's what white wants. White wants to play c5 successfully. I can undermine that by playing bishop d7 which lines up vision on the knight and prevents that from happening. Now, that is just a terribly strange move. What is that? Surely it's not... What? No, 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 no. This bishop is just a target. So, you know this is coming. So... I mean, but the bot is just going to move, move back if I do that. So I need, like, a follow-up move. Okay. Well, let's just force the... I mean, I, surely it's not going to let me take the bishop, right? So now, do I play, like, my kingside attack with f4? You know, this rook is actually also going to get over here. It's such a weird... Computers are so weird! They do such strange things, like putting this rook here. Like, what, it, what are you even doing there? Sorry. These videos end up just me complaining about computer moves. Okay, it's time for g5, and then f4. If h3, you cannot go here, because then the bishop takes. You actually have to move your knight here. But that's fine, because that was all part of the plan anyway. Uh, now f4, I think, or g4. f4 looks good. I like this. Even though we're giving this... Oh, do we sacrifice? Probably not. It's probably probably just not a good move to sacrifice there. We probably need our e-pawn is what we... Our e-pawn? E what? That is not an e-pawn, Gotham Chess. You need to watch your own videos. That's an h-pawn. We need to break out with the h-pawn. That is a terrible move. Because now you don't have c5. I said the only attacking idea for white there is c5. So h5 now. Here we go. We're in business. Sacrificing a pawn and bringing the knight back and we are going to be attacking. But the rook is still there, which is a little bit annoying. But queen e8. No, wait. Queen e8, there's knight g5, but then I take... Ah, it doesn't... <clears throat> I want to say it doesn't matter, but it's a computer. It scares me. G4. Computers also are like very cold-blooded. No, that must be a bad move. That must be... What even is that? That doesn't even address what I'm trying to do on the side of the board. Stop it, computer. I'm gonna pin you. I'm gonna pin you, computer. Bishop f5. Bishop f5. You've been pinned, computer. You've been pinned, computer. Knight takes g4. Boom. Queen h4 is coming. But this rook is still... Oh, and there it is. The rook has arrived. Now, the h file is blocked. So I think what we're gonna do is we're going to use the g file to attack. So maybe something like bishop h6. King h8 and rook g8, anticipating the opening of this file in the future. Something like sliding my king over. Maybe it's also useful for me to just stop c5 once and for all. So I really don't want c5 to land ever. So the position remains closed, and if you want to successfully attack a person, you need to close the position in an advantageous way. Okay, I mean, what is rook h1? What? What is this? What, do you just want your, your rooks to hug your king? That's the stupidest rook position I've ever seen in my life. And I've played a lot of chess. If you want to attack a king, you need to make sure the center and other parts of the board are closed. The knight is now jumping into e3. Takes, takes. The king now has no escape. The queen... What is that? What, is, what are these moves? Is it time to sacrifice with rook takes g2? Is this the end of the game? Take, take. And just brutalize here? That's game over. That is going to be so beautiful. Rook takes g2 is coming. And the bot doesn't let me do it. That's how you know you've won the game. If it doesn't take back your piece. But I can still get the bishop out. Or I can still get the rook out. Oh my gosh, the bot really like is convinced this is winning for me. You know what? I'm not even going to take your rook. I am going to savor this position against this robot. And now I'm going to take. And then I'm going to play queen h4. And the game is over. You cannot stop all of my attacking ideas here. I can take, I can pick this up next, and the game is over. That was a nice Dutch attacking game. 
that's the you know that's the reason I make these videos is because I want you all to to learn uh it's quite a move uh to learn openings as well like I can give you different opening ideas which is why you know videos like this are are important this pawn is going to take squares away and this is checkmate wow that was a good game we played a Dutch Leningrad, we played this Queen E8 variation, and, you know, oftentimes you all ask me how to navigate closed positions, and I don't have a specific video yet, today is January uh, 2021. I'm thinking when I'm recording this to upload this on the 12th, but maybe I uploaded it on the 13th, so I don't know. But tell me what date it is in the comments. Uh, actually, tell me when you're watching. And so, the way you navigate closed positions is available squares for your pieces, and outposts, and pawn play. And pawn play really stems from understanding your opening. I have many games of experience in the Dutch defense, so I don't just make up the fact, for example, that this is the best move. I know that's the best move because I've studied games. So you need to study model games of certain openings that you play to understand how to play the pawn structure, how to play the position. But at the same time, you know, I'm also aware that uh, when something like this happens, I'm looking at the pawn breaks, right? And when I see for the second game in a row that I have this mass, right? The last time that I played black, I also had this. You mobilize this structure forward. That is what you do. That is what you do when you have this massive structure of pawns. I just know that from experience. So this is what you do. You play openings, you get certain structures, and you go, oh, well, look at that. I mean, I can advance my pawns, and then a, a key pawn break, this pawn sacrifice, to allow us to later play the move G4. Look for the pawn breaks in the position and use them in an advantageous way. We will end with Ahmed. 2200 rated, bot, I'm very scared. Assalamu alaikum, are you ready to play? Good luck. I am ready to play, I hope you're ready to play. D4. Oh, now I'm getting Dutch defended. I am going to play a variation of the Dutch defense known as the Staunton Gambit. I'm thinking to play Staunton, but it's a bot. Do I trust the bot? Hmm. F5 inherently is very weakening, so moves like E4 are very good. I think I'm going to play a different one. I'm going to play... Yeah, let's play the Stunting Gambit. I just can't resist. Oh, he's got nothing to say. The first of many captures, Knight C3 is the point. And then you play Bishop to G5. Okay, Knight C6 is one of the moves. So, Bishop G5, Black uh, cannot defend with D5. Because the point is you will take, and you will play Queen H5 check, and you will win that pawn. Because your Bishop has cleared out. Against knight c6, the main line for white is to attack the knight, and then the knight goes to e5, so again, it's a little bit of theory. And now white has a choice, both of these moves are good. Uh, personally, I prefer queen to e2, and then when you castle long, okay, so far the computer is playing all theory. Uh, and then when you castle queenside, what will happen is your rook and knight defend d5, and your queen pressure is here. Okay, d6. Always wondering if I can take and then take back, thinking, I don't want to take this, I'd rather have my opponent take me. Bishop g4 is not a threat because I have f3, but that is how I am visualizing this. And f4 I was going to play, but then bishop g4, and I would lose material with this x-ray. So maybe f3, uh, maybe taking on f6 now. Um, a lot of appealing options, even knight h3 with some weird idea to go like this. I think I will make this trade now, because now the knight has destabilized the center. Losing the knight for black has destabilized the center. I'm not saying I'm winning, I'm just saying I've changed the position a little bit. I can take and open up my... Terrible at these arrows. I can take and open up my rook. It feels correct. It feels like I should be taking, uh, but I'm not sure. For now, let's just take back this, and then we will figure it out. That move seems slow. Actually, that move seems really slow. Can't I go f4? Something looks wrong here. Can I not just play the move pawn to f4? Right. So I can't go here because of the pin. But what if I take? Now this bishop isn't protecting. I mean, the, the problem here for Ahmed is that he's not protecting his king very well. So I'm thinking there's a way for me to just, you know, that was, I meant to, why did I make a fart noise? I've never made a fart noise in a YouTube video. That is not, I, I meant to go as in shred. And instead I went, that's not a noise that, anyway, this is what you get. I've never done that, but now I just did it. Um, 
I was trying to indicate you should shred open the position and I just made the wrong sound. Anyway, uh, I can defend my, my, my guy here, but then there's this. I'm thinking this just has to be right. Right, so now giving check always brings me pleasure. Okay, that's kind of weird, Ahmed. I'm, you don't need to confess what you're into to me. Knight to... Whoa, 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 whoa! 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 Ahmed, are you crazy? What? Are you insane? Yo, Ahmed's gone off the deep end. What? You're letting me double check you? You are attacking? I mean, yeah, I'm attacking you. What, what, what did you, what? Oh my God, dude, Ahmed is crazy. What is Ahmed doing? Okay, of course I can take the bishop. I don't have any mates. And the, the threat is still to take my knight, which couldn't happen last move because of this. If I bring my knight back somehow? If I bring my knight back to c4, for example, I'm attacking the queen. I feel like I should just take this. Take this and then finish my development like with g3. So what we're going to do now is I'm, I'm thinking we just create threats. Continue to create threats. So I play the move g3. Black has to make a decision. Black plays the passive move moving back. Now, for example, I have bishop h3, which develops a piece with a... What we're doing is we're, we're, we're creating something called an initiative. In chess, an initiative is when you create a lot of threats, and in doing so, you also improve your position. If queen b5, queen e4, don't I just take? That looks pretty good for me. So this counterattack on my rook isn't going to work. Okay, if the bot played it, that makes me a little bit scared. But what if we just play queen takes b7? Now this is a triple fork, no? Okay, rook d8. So I cannot take. If I take, he's going to take with a bishop, and my, my piece is still under fire here. Mm. Rook d8 was a great move. I did not see that. So probably the best thing to do is go here, here, and some sort of way where I give away a knight, but I don't lose my rook in the corner. Oh, rook d8 was an excellent move. Very silly for me to miss that. At the same time, at the same time, what if I just move my rook? For instance, like here. And then Ahmed will take, and then I will take. And I'm down material. But there's no way I lose that game, right? So first of all, rook f1, there's also rook d2, first of all. First of all, also just going for mate. So maybe I have to play rook c1, which I like a little bit less. But the point is that I'm, I'm sacrificing a little bit of material, but my opponent's king is so bad that I have chances regardless because of how bad their position is. But this is a big decision. It's a big decision. I can't, I can't just, I can't rush it. I have to calculate. I have to calculate this. But I don't see anything else. The problem is if I play something like knight e2, what's going to happen is take, 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 and I'm hanging here. So I'm thinking rook c1. I'm thinking got to play rook c1, take on c7. And the count is that I have a bishop and one pawn. I have a bishop and one pawn. Rook f1 here would blunder queen to d1 back rank checkmate, which is brutal. Uh, maybe finish our development with knight e2. I want to go knight f4. Queen d6, yep, queen d6. Of course, wanting to trade. We don't want to trade because we're down material. Queen b7, there is this. Queen a6. I don't think I'm losing anything on that. I don't think. I might be. Definitely queen trade is last resort. So we're going to go here, here, here. Queen e5. Okay, no queen e5. Which makes me think I should play knight to f4. And try to go knight to e6. Yeah, but Ahmed's beating me here. Ahmed is winning. Hmm. Rook e8. What if I play bishop to g2? Oh, bishop to g2, there's a very cruel defense. But I'm still going to play it. It looks like I'm, I'm getting something here. What? I don't... Oh... There is a mate. 
Oh, there is a mate. Oh my gosh. I can't take. I gotta go here. Wait, did the bot have that on the left? No way. Oh my goodness, rugby won. And if I take, it's the same thing. Well, I have to change the title here. I'm going to keep this. That was an amazing game. It's not beating more bots, it's playing more bots. Aren't you glad you watched 35 minutes into this? If I take with this, there is check, and then the rook comes in on the back rank. Oh my gosh. I'm going to let it do it. Well, I actually didn't have a choice. I'm not, I'm, I'm not really acting. Oh my god, rookie won. We can play again, but I'm afraid the outcome will be the same. All right, Ahmed. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Let's analyze that. That was a wild, wild game. Oh, the overlay is terrible. Ew. It looks so bad. It looks so terrible. Ew. I'm not gonna... No, I'm not gonna subject you guys to that. Okay. So, it was a completely fine game. And then the bot struck with the move queen to e4. And you know what's crazy? You guys, you guys were seeing, I saw this, but I thought that after queen b7, I was creating sufficient threats. But then came rook d8. And this is, I guess, where I messed up. I went for this, and my logic was I have a bishop and a pawn for a rook, and my opponent's king is very weak. But notice what the bot did. It brought back its queen and immediately went for a queen trade of my most active piece. When I declined, it kicked my piece out, and then the second it could move its king, it got its king out, it brought its rook out, and detonated a nasty shot like this. That's really instructive, and I don't care if I lose, because there's still so much to learn here. Um, I'm not gonna cut this out and always pretend like I'm gonna win games. So, wow, queen e4, and then the nice idea, rook to d8. If I took the rook, there was not knight takes, because then I win the queen, but there was bishop takes, and somehow it all works. And I can't, I can't draw arrows. Wow. What a game. So what, I mean, definitely here I shouldn't have, do, I sh shouldn't have done what I did. I should have played queen f3. It's probably what I should have done. Queen f3 to create a threat here, finish my development, and then it would have been a much better game. Queen f3, knight e2. And the, what you would learn from a game like this is, I got too aggressive and I miscalculated a forcing move for my opponent. I misevaluated a transformation from a position. Or I just missed how strong queen e4 was. And my opponent used the danger levels concept. So, wow, that was a lot of fun. Very fun game. I'm going to get revenge on this bot in the next episode.